friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the Hello Bluebird Flying High stamp set. But before I get to the coloring, I wanted to share a tip with you guys. Because this hot air balloon has those really long strings, I was kind of worried about stamping it out first and getting the die to line up perfectly. So I'm actually going to die cut the image first and then I'm going to line up that stamp over top in my stamp positioner and stamp that down with some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. I'm just rubbing the door of my Misty with a microfiber cloth to get even pressure and then stamping that down one more time. And that way I can ensure that those lines um, of the strings that are holding the basket are perfectly aligned on that really narrow die cut. So I actually stamped out two of the hot air balloons in this way and then one extra panel with all of my critters and accessory images. So I'm gonna jump into the coloring with the first hot air balloon. I'm actually only going to be showing the coloring of one of the hot air balloons on screen because I'm going to be doing them the same, just flip-flopped. So for this one, I'm starting with blue on the far left stripe. I'm using B34, B37, and B39. And when I do my second air balloon off screen, I'm just going to put the blue stripe on the right hand side. So I started with that B39 and outlined both edges of that stripe of the balloon. And then I'm coming in with my B37 and just really going over the edge of that B39 because the B39 is such a dark color and I do want to have a nice smooth transition to that center. I want that center to be really nice and highlighted so I'm coloring that in with my highlight shade which is the B34. And while I have those markers out, I'm also going to bring in my other panel and color in the bluebirds. So I'm using the B39 first on this little guy and then coming in with the B37 and just blending out the edge like I mentioned before. I'm trying to be really small with those darkest shadows because these birds are super tiny and I don't want them to get so dark that you no longer see their features. So I blended out with the B34 and then even brought in the B32 for the face and the belly and especially the area over the eye so that you could still see that quite visibly. The second bird I'm going to do just a little bit different. I'm going to start with a ring around the outside of his head and then also a little shadow on the edges of his wings and tail. But I'm using the B37 first for this guy. Uh, his eyes are pretty close to the outer edge of his face. So if I would use that B39, I was afraid that they would get totally lost in there. So I went in with the B37 as my darkest, blended out with the B34 and then the B32. And then for the last little bird, I did go back and add a bit of that B39 because he's also facing sideways like the first one. His eye is much more toward the front of his body. So I did have room for all of those shades in there. So I'm just gonna continue blending him out and then I'm going to move on to the next section of my hot air balloon. So I wanted the next stripe to be white, but I didn't want to go in with warm or cool grays. I wanted something that was a little bit different, maybe a little bit more of a creamier shade. So I decided to use E40 and E41. So again, I'm outlining that stripe with the E41, which is my darkest. And then I'm gonna come in with the E40, which is going to be my mid-tone, even though I don't have a highlight shade. The highlight shade is actually just the plain white paper. So I'll go over the edge of that with my colorless blender to smooth that into the white. And then I'm going to skip over the center stripe and then do the next one with this combo as well. Um, so I'm gonna have uh, every other stripe be this kind of creamy white color. I'll use my colorless blender to soften up the edge of that E40 again. 
And then I wanted to tie this in on another area of the card. So I'm going to go back to my focal panel with the critters and I'm going to do the bunny with these shades. Although I am going to add in the E42 just to darken him up slightly. I didn't want him to be the exact same shade as the stripes on the hot air balloon. So I use that E42 first and then I'm blending out with the E41 and then the E40 and letting that fade to white on his face and I also left his tail white. Since I had these colors out already, I decided to do the white areas on my fox with the E40 and the E41. The E42 was a little bit dark for those areas because I definitely wanted them to stay looking white. And then I'm going to move on to the center section of the hot air balloon, and that is going to be yellow. So I pulled out Y11, Y13, and Y15. So I'm using the Y15 first to outline the edges of that stripe. And then I'm going to go over that pretty heavy handedly with the Y13 because I want to really soften up the inner edge of that. I'll use the Y11 next. And I quickly realized here that I was going to need a fourth shade. So once I finished blending out with the Y11, I'm also going to grab my Y000 and use that on the very center because I want it to look really nice and highlighted because that's the part that would be most forefront and most catching the light. So my final stripe is going to be pink and I pulled out RV21, RV23, RV25, and RV29. I'm starting with the RV29 and once again just doing the same process outlining the edges of the stripe so that it looks like it's going in a little bit and kind of puckered where each of those black lines are and then each of the little uh, stripes you know gets kind of puffy and catches the light in the center. So I blended that out with the RV25 and then used the RV23 for the highlight. I ended up not needing the fourth shade because it's just a much smaller stripe there. For the bottom of the balloon, I went back to my E42 and added a little shading there and then blended out with the E41 and finally the E40. I also used that combo for the basket on the second balloon, but for this balloon, I wanted the basket to be a little bit darker. I didn't want them to be identical. So I went with E43, E44, and E47. I'm using the E47 on both sides so it matches the roundness of the balloon. And then I did add a little bit more of that E47 down at the very bottom. And then I'm blending that out with the E44, just bringing that color toward the center of the basket. And then I'll fill in that space with the E43. And I did do a second layer off screen just to smooth out that blend and increase that saturation a little bit. So the balloons are done and I'm going to move back over to my other panel with my critters and accessories. And I'm going to keep those same marker shades, the E43, E44, and E47 to color my little bear. I wanted to tie that darker brown in somewhere else on the card. So I'm using the E47 to outline his little body, create a nice round chubby face. And then I'm going to blend that out with the E44. And again, just making sure to really scrub over the edge of that E47, break up that pigment and get it nice and soft and blending. And then I'll use the E43 next. I wanted him to have a lot of contrast on him, so I'm actually gonna pull in some more shades. Um, I colored almost down to his nose and then added a little shadow under his chin on his belly. But then I brought in my E42 to just blend that out a little bit softer and even brought in my E41 for the tip of his nose and the rest of his belly. 
For the two little foxes, I'm going to go with my favorite combo for foxes, which is YR12, YR14, and YR18. I'm using the YR18 to color in the outer edges of their face. For the one on the left, he's facing forward, so I went the whole way around his head. For the one on the right, I put it a little bit heavier on the right-hand side since he's facing toward the left. And then I blend that out with the YR14. And then I'm going to uh, blend out the other guy at the same time. These guys are pretty small, so it was really easy to just do them both at once. And then finally, I'm gonna come in with the YR12 as my highlight. Make sure that that's the part that covers the little eyes so that they're really visible. And I decided I didn't like the first little guy's paws being white, so I'm gonna color right over the previous coloring that I did since it was so light and make those orange so it contrasts against the basket. For the elephant, I'm going to use W1, W3, and W5 starting with that W5 and outlining his face, um, giving him a little bit of a thicker shadow on the left-hand side since he's facing toward the right. I always like to have the face in the highlight area if I can so that it you know just makes them more visible, really highlights their cute little personalities. So once I have the W5 laid in, I'm going to blend out with the W3 and save a lot of room for a nice highlight in the center of the face with that W1. So I will just bring that in and finish off the two little ears and then fill in all of the white space in the center and the little strip on the top of the trunk as well. And then for his toenails, I'm gonna grab the W00 and just really quickly dot those in. Next, I'm going to use R11 and R20 to color in the insides of my critter's ears. So I'm using that R21 first on some of them like the bear and the elephant where they're colored a little bit darker. I only used the R20, but on the bunny and the um, fox on the far left, I also blended that out with the R11. And then I gave all of my critters some rosy cheeks with those shades as well. Again, it didn't show up that well on especially the bear, but also the elephant. So I did darken that up just a tiny bit with the R21. And then went over the edge of that with the R11 once again to just soften it into the fur. I colored the pennant banners off screen in the same shades that I used on the hot air balloons. And then for this scalloped border, I decided to make that yellow, but I wanted it to be just a bit darker so it would contrast even against that yellow stripe in the centers. So I went with Y13, Y15, and Y17. So I just darkened up each little corner with the Y17. I'm bringing that color down toward the center with the Y15. Just really quick and easy. I'm going to do them both in yellow so it matches both balloons. And then for the centers, I'm going to fill that in with the Y13. Just a quick swipe to bridge the gap between those darker colors. And then once I'm finished with the coloring, I'm going to grab my black Sakura Jelly Roll pen Get that started off to the side and then I'll go over all of the eyes of my critters to make them nice and bright and shiny. This really just brings your critters to life. It's an extra step but it's well worth it. And then I'm going to trim these images out with their matching dyes. For my background I used the Lawn Fawn Large Slim Line with Sliders die to die cut a panel of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and I wanted to create a really pretty pink sunset sky. So I'm starting at the top with Spun Sugar Distress Oxide ink. 
This color is really pale, so it did take a little bit of work to get down a nice layer of color on there, but I really want to create a nice ombre fade uh, from the really light color at the top um, down next into a mid-tone pink, which I'm using Kitsch Flamingo for. This is one of the newer Distress Oxide inks, and it's a really pretty color. So I'm going over the edge of that spun sugar and bringing that down the panel about, uh, so we're going down about two thirds of the way now. I want to leave the bottom third for my darkest color, and that is going to be picked raspberry. But before I get to that, I'm going to blend over the transition between the spun sugar and the kitsch flamingo. And then I'll bring in my final shade. And this one I'm going to do the entire bottom with. So I'm going in there pretty heavy handed with this one as well because I want there to be that nice gradient that I was talking about. So I'm going to do the whole bottom area and bring that up into the Kitsch Flamingo. Make sure that the bottom edges especially are nice and dark. And then I'll go back to the Kitsch Flamingo and blend over the transition area from that darkest into the mid-tone. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to take some Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust, give that a good shake, and then squirt a little bit of that onto my work surface. I'm going to add a little bit of water next to that so I can just thin it down slightly so it's easier to pick up with a paintbrush and splatter all over my background. This is going to give it kind of a nice opalescent shimmer. And then I'm going to do the same with some of that Kitsch Flamingo and also the Picked Raspberry. I'm going to water those down. I'm going to use the Kitsch Flamingo first because it's the lighter of the two shades and then do a little more splatter detail just by tapping that fine paintbrush onto my finger, creating that nice splatter effect. And then I'll go straight into the picked raspberry. I don't need to clean my brush because it's just a darker pink. And then once that has dried completely, I'm going to pop it into my Misty so I can stamp my sentiment at the bottom. I'm doing the one that says flying by to say hello. And I stamp that using uh, Versafine Onyx Black ink. Then I'll set that aside for that sentiment to dry and pop my card base into my Misty using a piece of Lawn Fawn Speckled Eggshell cardstock. And I'm going to stamp the inner sentiment and images using Lawn Fawn's Plastic Flamingo ink. I use two more of the little birds and the sentiment wishing you an amazing day just cleaned off that sentiment and stamped it down a second time because it was brand new. I'd never stamped it before, so it had a little bit of residue. Then I'm taking the Hello Bluebird Partly Cloudy die and die cutting that out of some white cardstock to get some little cloud bits. So I'm going to use those on my focal panel. I just laid them out where I wanted them and then I'm going to glue them down into place using some Tombow Mono Multi Glue and uh, just setting those off the edge wherever I think that they look good and then I can trim those down in a little bit. So I have three clouds kind of clustered together at the bottom and then one kind of smaller cloud up at the top right. And then I'm going to take my two hot air balloon images. I've added my critters into the little baskets and then lined the backs of these images with foam tape so they'll have a little bit of dimension so they'll be flying above the clouds. I'm peeling the release papers off of both of them at the same time because I want to uh, get them lined up how I want them on this panel uh, at the same time. I didn't want to have to kind of peel it up and adjust. So. I wanted to just have them kind of tipped a little bit to the left and right, make it look like there's some movement there. And I realized I had a little too much foam tape on this one behind that elephant and the basket, so it couldn't overlap the first balloon. So I just peeled a little bit more of that off and got that how I wanted it. And then I will press that down into place and take my Cutter Bee Teflon scissors 
and trim down all of those little overhanging pieces. And because they are the Teflon coated scissors, they cut right through that foam tape and everything and nothing gets stuck to them. They're great. Then I'll grab my card base and adhere my focal panel down just using some more of that Tombow Mono Multi Glue, lining that up on the card base. It's the exact same size, uh, which is three and a half by eight and a half. Then I'll bring in the rest of my images. I'm gonna start with the little banners. I could have added these uh, before I trimmed off all of the extra overhanging bits, but I just forgot to. So I'm just gonna add them now and uh, I will cut off the little bits once again. This one, because that elephant was already glued down, I had to uh, kind of line it up and figure out where to trim that down a bit and then just tuck the very edge of that behind the elephant. And then uh, once again, I'm going to use my scissors to just trim those off so everything is flush with the edges of the card and will fit nicely in an envelope. Then I'll take the little pennant banners and I'm going to add one to each of the baskets. And I'm purposely adding the little pink banner to the opposite side of where the pink stripe on the balloon is and the same with the blue, just kind of spreading out that color a little bit. And then I have my three sweet little birds. This first one is going to be flying up to interact with that little fox that's kind of hanging out of the edge of the basket. I thought that would be really cute. And then I'm going to have one up in the top and this third one I thought would be really cute, kind of flying in front of the hot air balloon. So I'm going to add him over on the right hand side there. And then I'm going to uh, add a little bit of extra color and dimension to these balloons. So the first shade that I'm using is R01. And I'm just doing a, like a little scallop at the bottom edge of each of those clouds. And then I'm going to grab the R00 and go over that and kind of soften it into the whiter areas. Uh, and I thought maybe that would be enough, but it still was standing out a little bit too much for me. I wanted like a softer haze. So I grabbed the R000 as well and just went over the top edge of that one more time. And I really love how that just gave those clouds that pink tinge so that they're um, also cast in that pink glow from the sunset. And then finally, I wanted to add a little bit of Stardust Stickles. So I'm gonna put that in the same area as the shading on each of the clouds. Just going over that with um, the nozzle, squeezing out a tiny bit and spreading that around. And then I also wanted to have it somewhere else on the card, so I decided to add it to the little yellow banners on the hot air balloons. Once again, just squeezing out a tiny amount and then um, using the nozzle to spread that around. And then I added it to the pendant banners as well. I just did it on the right hand side and then across the bottom on both of those. And that is going to finish off my card for today. So I will lift that up to the camera so you can see all of the detail and the sparkle and shine. And of course, give you another peek at the inside as well. I had so much fun creating this card for you today. I really hope that you enjoyed it too. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of the products I use, you'll find them listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. I want to thank you guys so much again for watching. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.